<clears throat> so hello everyone this is deepak singhal i welcome you all to the platform of vidya guru so guys very happy new year and i hope that this new year must be going so good for you guys and if not and if you all were waiting for my class for my session then it's just a request for all my new listeners that if you have not subscribed the channel kindly do it and all my listeners are requested that kindly share this session with all of your friends who are also preparing for the same examination as you guys are preparing so be it ssc banking or sorry banking exam for any other exam there is only one platform where you can trust upon that is vidya guru so without taking your much time kindly like the session if you like it because at the end of the session with the flow you guys forget it so the very first current of it is about the cost of chatterjee so sorry the cost tape chatterjee so this cost of chatterjee is india's 78th chess grandmaster my dear he is just 19 year old yes he is just 19 year old and you will not believe that he was playing against the grandmaster mitra bha guha grandmaster mitra bha guha and the people were expecting that mr mitra bha guha will win the people they were expecting that mr mitra bha guha will win but yes this man mr kostev chatterji he mixed up the order in the end game and he managed to draw it and this is the reason why he secured his final grandmaster norm so yes he was playing at the mpl 59th national senior chess championship 2022 which held in new delhi and he is the 10th grandmaster from west bengal dear so west bengal yes this city sorry this state has produced some of the famous grandmasters of india apart from that he is mr kostev chatterji apart from mr kostev chatterji mr vishwanathan anand from chennai was a first grandmaster in india and mr doma raju gukesh from chennai he is the youngest grandmaster at the age of 12 years and 7 months 17 days apart from them this is the list of some of the important grandmasters of india <clears throat> and their states and the time like in january 2022 we have mr bharat mr rahul in june 2022 mr pranav in august 2022 pranav anand in september 2022 and aditya mittal from maharashtra in december 2022 so apart from from this news the second most important news is about the siachen glacier but before i begin the class on siachen can you guys tell me what would be the height of the siachen glacier and why it is so important for us my dear siachen glacier which is located at the height of over 18000 feet uh from the ground level yes this is among the largest glaciers in the non polar region of the world and it lies in the karakoram range system apart from this why this siachen glacier is important first of all what is the meaning of siachen siachen in balti language where the word sia means rose and chin means anything which is found in abundance so siachen in balti language where the sia means uh, <clears throat> where the sia means a uh, rose and the chin means anything which is found in abundance apart from this my dear it is in the karakoram range of uh, means in the karakoram range of trans himalayas and this is the highest battlefield in the world yes my dear it lies on noc line of control between india and pakistan and you you will not believe this that yes it was only 1984 it was only in 1984 that the indian army got the possession of siachen glacier and the operation the operation which is responsible for it was operation meghdoot and since 1984 we possess it yes the government of india spends almost 5 to 6 crore daily in order to maintain siachen glacier apart from that anyone who is posted there he will have to work there for only 3 months because you cannot sustain there for more than 3 months uh, like by watching all the climatic conditions that the soldiers they need to bear there 
apart from that i just need to ask you whether the siachen glacier is open for tourism or not means if you want to visit siachen glacier is it possible or not yes my dear it is now possible because on 21st of october 2019 mr rajnath singh the defense minister of india he said that now siachen glacier is open for tourism now you guys can go there and see that what are the conditions under which the indian soldiers are guarding siachen glacier we have lost many of them so actually what is the complete story behind siachen glacier it was in the indo pakistan war of 1971 guys which we we won an agreement was signed between the two countries in 1972 which came to be known as the shimla agreement but my dear shimla agreement failed to clarify or shimla agreement failed to clearly mention about this glacier means it failed to clearly mention that who controls this glacier as a result of which the pakistani army they tried to enter the glacier in 1984 but with the help of operation megdoot indian army got the control of it and yes since 1984 we have lost we have lost many soldiers while guarding the siachen glacier and it lies at a very important point between pakistan occupied kashmir and yes between that territory which is ceded to china which we all know means the territory which is ceded to china by pakistan and also the easternmost region of ladakh which is under the chinese control that we name it as aksai chin so siachen glacier is the highest battlefield in the world apart from it this glacier is a source of many rivers including the nubra river and what is this river the nubra river it is a tributary of river shayok with which is a part of indus river system and if i ask you that who was the first prime minister to visit siachen glacier and this news is very astonishing mr manmohan singh was the first pm to visit siachen glacier in the year 2005 so from 1984 till 2004 there was not even a single pm to go and look at the condition of siachen glacier and after manmohan singh the second pm to follow sorry the second pm to follow and visit siachen glacier was the present prime minister of india mr narendra modi he went to siachen for the first time in 2014 so this is all about the siachen glacier so now what is so much important about this glacier now captain shiva chauhan she has become the first women officer to be operationally deployed in siachen so the fire and fury crop sorry the fire and fury corps officer captain shiva chauhan became the first women to be operationally deployed at such a highest battle ground in the kumar post on siachen glacier even this post is about i'm 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 not uh, uh, i'm not so sure about the figures but the kumar post is about uh 15800 feet it is located at the height of 15800 feet even this is not so i would say uh, even the kumar post is also not so low this information was tweeted by the official account of the fire and fury corps of the indian army and miss shiva had to undergo some arduous training before her posting in the kumar post she is mr shiva shiva chauhan after that the china yes the china has become the first country in asia and the second in the world to launch the hydrogen power train so according to some experts hydrogen is the new fuel hydrogen is the new fuel because we know that the kind of dependence we have over fossil fuels the kind of dependence we have over them and it is not just the dependence over fossil fuel it is actually responsible for the emission of carbon dioxide which is one of the greatest greenhouse gases and this carbon dioxide my dear is responsible for the global warming because if you guys are preparing for the exam you must be knowing about a effect which is called greenhouse gas effect though the greenhouse gas effect is good for living it is good for life on earth but as i said excess of everything is bad so even the excess of greenhouse gas effect is what we term as global warming so china has become the first country in the asia and the second in the world to launch the hydrogen powered urban trains though in the month of september germany also sorry the germany already did it and germany with this became the first country in the world to launch it so we have the chinese company crrc corporation limited who built a train that has a top speed of 160 km per hour 
and can run without refueling for about 600 kilometers. Whereas the train of Germany, which we say the German Coradia Island serial train, which was developed by a French company, Alstom, has set a record of 1175 kilometer of range without refueling. So it is just a half of it, the Chinese variant of the hydrogen power train. Apart from this, this is what the hydrogen train looks like. And my dear, the hydrogen power trains, they are responsible for zero emission. And in this, according to Chinese official, they said that with the help of these trains, we will be able to reduce the carbon dioxide emission compared to diesel by 10 tons per year. So what is the stand of India on it? My dear, India is committed to achieve the zero net carbon emission by the year 2070. And according to the Railway Minister of India, Mr. Ashwani Vaishnav, he said that India is most likely to get its first ever indigenous hydrogen powertrain by December 2023. So by the end of this year, it might happen that India will have its first ever indigenously built hydrogen powertrain. My dear, it is very easy to import the technology. We know that because while importing the technology, you will just have to spend the money. But the actual thing is that whether India is capable enough to, to uh, I would say, develop that technology at home. So it is a fight for that. And my dear, looking over all the achievements that we have achieved in this year and the, uh, sorry, in the previous year, I can assure you about one thing that India is soon going to become a superpower in the world. Because we, uh, we already discussed about that what happened in the rupee to rupee trade, where India just said that the countries which are ready for, uh, like the countries which are ready for trading in rupee, they can come forward because India is a market of 140 crore population. So we are ready to buy your products, but be it that you will have to accept the payments in Indian rupee. And the kind of interest which, which actually evolved around the world, like out of means out of all the countries in the world, uh, around 35, 36 countries, they came forward and they showed their interest in the rupee to rupee trade. It actually shows one thing. It shows that India is having some influence as far as the international politics is concerned nowadays. Apart from that, we have DRDO. So DRDO celebrated its 65th foundation day. And the chairman of DRDO is Dr. S. V. Kamath. He reaffirmed the DRDO's commitment towards research and development excellence. So yes, my dear, it is only the DRDO because of which India is making some strides in the defense sector. It is just because of DRDO that now India, which used to import some weapons, like which used to import weapons on a large scale, it is just because of DRDO, we are developing them uh, indigenously. It is because of the research and development works of DRDO that the Indian government is able to save not only its precious foreign reserves, but we are also we are also becoming, uh, I would say, one of the greatest defense exporters in the world. Yes, people, they have showed their interest as far as the Indian defense technology is concerned. For example, if you remember about that incident where we misfired the Brahmos missile in Pakistan, yes, yes. After that, Pakistani air defense system were not able to detect our Brahmos. Though, according to Indian Army, that was just a misfire. So after watching that misfire, the Philippines came forward and said, sir, I want your, Fili sorry, I, I want your, uh, 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 the, uh, sorry, I, I, I want your Brahmos missile system. Apart from that, can any one of you tell me, very recently we, we have sold our Pinaka missile system. To which country we have sold it? Yes, my dear, the Pinaka missile system is also developed by DRTO. So this is the esteemed organization in order to make India self-reliant as far as the defense structure is concerned, as far as the defense sector is concerned. So it is a premier defense research and development agency which comes under the Ministry of Defense, Government of India. So these are some of the important details which I, which I have already discussed. Apart from that, this uh, institution, this uh, means uh, the DRDO was set up in the year 1958. And the headquarters is located in New Delhi. The next current affair, it is about the demonetization process. But before I go, 
and explain you something about the demonetization process let me tell you just a few details that everyone should sorry every one of you should know about my dear we have the rbi act 1934 yes so under the rbi act 1934 we have section 26 clause number 2 section 26 clause number 2 and when the Supreme Court of India, because various petitions were filed in Supreme Court of India saying that such demonetization was not a process which was properly regulated by the government. Because of which Supreme Court of India asked the government and RBI, especially the RBI, that whether RBI was informed about such a decision. And you guys will be shocked to know this, that RBI said, Ki, yes, sir, we were informed about the demonetization process six months uh, I would say uh, uh, the six months prior to the demonetization step, which was announced all over the country on 8th of November 2016. So we were knowing six months prior to this. This is the reason why we were properly preparing for it. And you guys, I think even I was so shocked to know this, that this, this thing of demonetization, uh, RBI was already aware of this for six months and still this news could not be leaked. But the thing is that in a verdict, in the majority verdict of 4 is to 1, Supreme Court found that demonetization process was right and there is no flaw in the demonetization process. But after this verdict, the BJP and Congress war has started in the country. You know about it. So the one judge which was against the 4-1 was Madam. And you guys must be aware of this name, Madam B. V. Nagaratna. If you guys are not remember or if you guys are not knowing anything about the Madam, then let me tell you, Justice B. V. Nagaratna is going to become India's first female Chief Justice in the year 2027. So in the coming year of 2027, Justice B. V. Nagaratna will become India's first female Chief Justice. But it is important for all of us to know that what the Madam said. Madam said, under the RBI Act 1934, Section 26, Clause number 2, under which the government of India banned 500,000 rupee note, this section say that the government of India can advise RBI to ban some series. You can ban some series. For example, if you are aware with this, on any currency note, there is some number which is imprinted over it. That is a series. So RBI can ban some series of that particular note. So the way government of India completely banned 500 and 1000 rupee, uh, sorry, the 500 and 1000 rupee currency notes, that was illegal. According to Justice B.V. Nagaratna, the government should be preparing for it means the government should have done this with the proper legislation because according to her section 26 clause number two of rbi act 1934 does not permit the government to completely ban a currency it just permits the government to ban a series of some currency the way government completely banned it it is illegal so she declared that that it should be declared illegal on legal grounds. According to her, rupee 500 and 1000 currency note, they should be banned through a proper legislation passed in a parliament. But that was not done. We know that the government banned it through a notification because according to government, we uh, means the, uh, because according to government, the government said, okay, madam, we already have a law which 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 actually gives power to the government to ban any currency note and that is rbi act section 26 of the clause number 2 but now it is in the majority verdict it has already been decided so uh, nothing can be done so now the supreme court dismissed all the 58 petition challenging the demonetization saying that the decision related to the economic policy of government cannot be withdrawn so now what are some of the objectives of demonetization. This was done to curb corruption, to tackle some terrorism and terror funding, eliminating the fake currency, and also to eradicate the black money. 
apart from this my dear you guys need to know about one such program of rbi that is e rupee though we guys are not talking about it but according to me e rupee is actually is actually demonetization it is actually it actually can be termed as uh, a process of demonetization whereas this step cannot be termed as your demonetization because government banned a series of note means 500 and 1000 and they made available some other series of note that is 500 and 2000 so it is a kind of a changing process but under the e rupee the government and rbi they are planning to completely stop the printing of currency notes so what is a demonetization process you guys can read from here where the decision of the government to revoke the legal tender status of any currency note so once a currency is uh, demonetized it cannot be used again so we have the next current affair it is about nitin gadkari Mr. Nitin Gadkari, the transport means the minister, the road minister, and sorry, the minister of Ministry of Road, Transport, and Highway inaugurated the first phase of the new Zori Bridge in Goa. My dear, this is the second largest cable state bridge in India, which is built over the river Zori, and it will connect North Goa to South Goa. So this is a six forty meter long bridge, which is built in three phases. This is how the bridge looks like. apart from that we have the next important current affair related to prime minister prime minister modi uh, is to address the 108th indian science congress which is to be held in nagpur my dear this is organized by indian space sorry indian science congress association from 3rd to 7th january at the rashtra sant tuka sorry tuka doji maharaj nagpur university the 107 indian Science Congress 2022 was already held at the University of Agricultural Sciences G K V K campus, Bangalore, Karnataka. So the theme of this Indian Science Congress is Science and Technology for Sustainable Development with Women Empowerment. This is very very important. You should be knowing about all the important themes. So these these are some of the other programs at I S C means the Children Science Congress. the farmer science congress the tribal science congress so this science congress was set up in kolkata for the first time in 1914 then we have the next important news for today that is crpf chief mr sujoy lal thausen he takes over the additional charge of director journal of psf that is border security force so the government of india has given the crpf director general sujoy lal thausen uh, he means they have given this sujoy lal thousand the additional charge as the director general of border security force so this officer will retire on 31st means this officer pankaj kumar singh who was earlier the director general he retired on 31st of december 2022 then we have the next important news these are some of the important i would say battalion for example the seven armed police forces which is central armed police forces which comes directly under the ministry of home affairs assam rifles set up in 1835 bsf in 1965 central industrial security force 1969 crpf 1939 ipbp which guards the border between india china 1962 nsg national security guards set up in 1984 and ssb shashastra seema bal 1963 so these are some of the important central armed police forces which comes directly under the ministry of home affairs then we have the next important project launched by tamil nadu this is the first project to be launched in, in the country so this project is termed as project nilgiri tahar so these are the tahars the government of tamil nadu has issued the order to conserve the nilgiri tahar was the state animal of tamil nadu at the cost of 25.14 crore so this is the first nilgiri tahar conservation project in the country which will be implemented for 5 years starting from 2022 till 27 and it will follow a strategy which will include synchronized surveys to estimate the number of tahars and the tahar is a endangered species is protected under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 
India 1972. Very, very important, especially Schedule 1. Then we have the next important news that is India's first underwater metro is ready to become operational by December 2023. It uh, has been released. I mean, the news has been released according to the Kolkata Metro Rail Corporation, where it said that India's first underwater metro service, which is the East-West Metro Corridor, is expected to be completed by December 2023. This is how it looks like. So this is India's first underwater metro, which is ready to become operational by 2023. Means uh, the works, the work means the 80% of the work has already been completed. The metro line, which will connect the Salt Lake to Hora via Kolkata with a stretch below the Hooghly River, is currently operational between Sector 5 and Sildha stations. So of the total length of 16.55 length, sorry, double five kilometer length of the project, 9.30 kilometer length between sector five and Silda is already operational. So the remaining 7.25 kilometer length is likely to be operational by December 2023, in which 80% work is already done. Then we have the next important news. This is uh, something about the metro rail system, like the first metro rail system in the world was started in London on 10th of January, 1863. And if you talk about India, it was Kolkata Metro. It was started, uh, means it started its operation from 24th of October, 1984, between Dumdam to the Tolly Gunj. It was started with the help of Soviet Union. Very, very important. It was started with the help of Soviet Union. Then we have the important news about the system of election commission of India, which is the no voter left behind goal. It is one of the goal of election commission of India. That is no voter left behind. So in order to achieve this goal, now we have to study what election commission of India has decided. My dear, the election commission of India has moved a proposal to all the political parties to enable the domestic migrants. Now, who are the domestic migrants? For example, if you hail from Bihar, and for the livelihood, if you migrate to Punjab, so you are a domestic migrant. So the problem is you are the originally the inhabitant of Bihar. But when the Bihar assembly elections will take place, or even when in the 2024, the general elections of the Lok Sabha will take place. If you are living in Punjab, then you will not be able to vote there. Why? Because your original vote is there in Bihar. So you, you will have to travel back to Bihar for the vote. So this should not be done. And also to ensure that there should be no voter in India who is left behind, Election Commission of India has moved a proposal to all the political parties and said that kindly you guys enable, you guys enable the domestic migrants to vote for their home constituencies with the help of RVM. What is RVM? RVM is remote EVM. So this RVM has been developed with the help of Bharat Electronics Limited and Electronic Corporation of India Limited. It is based on the currently used EVM system, but it is remote EVM technology. The Election Commission has sought the written views of all the recognized national and the state level parties by January 30, 2023. So all the state and the national parties of India, they are requested to submit their views, like what they think about this. And my dear, this is all about the proper data, which is there with the Election Commission of India, which is the main reason that why Election Commission of India is so keen on coming some, sorry, is, is so keen for bringing the RVMs. For example, uh, in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, the total number of people which voted were just 66.44 percent, whereas in 2019, the turnout, the voter turnout was 67.40 percent. It means that the voter turnout is not even 70 percent. So what about the other 33 percent of the population? Might be many of them were the domestic migrants. So if all of this process it goes like this, it means that it goes against 
the norm of ec election commission that there should be no voter in india who is left behind then we have brazil yes the legendary footballer pele he dies at the age of 82 because of the colon cancer he died of the multiple organ failure but the thing is that whatever you say about pele it would be less he is the man who won brazil its three world cups yes of 1958 62 and 1970 even the pele was named as the fifa player of the century in year 2000 in his in his whole whole career he uh, scored a world record of 1281 goals in just 1363 appearances during a career sorry during a career spanning 21 years including 77 goals in seven in 92 appearances for his country this is the complete name of Mr. Pele. And he became a global star when he was just at the age of 17. He helped Brazil to win the three World Cups, 1958, 62, and 1970. And this is the reason why Pele is also termed as the king of football. Apart from this, Indian Army, my dear, inaugurated the first ever two-story 3D printed dwelling units in Ahmedabad. Yes. So Indian Army inaugurated the first 3D printing house or the 3D printing house dwelling unit for the soldiers at Ahmedabad, Kent on 28 December 2022. It has been constructed by Military Engineering Services in association with the Micro Private Limited. So now this structure which has been constructed by using the 3D printing, it comply, sorry, it complies with the Zone 3 earthquake norms and the building material, it is completely green. So it also complies with the green building norms. This is how it looks like. Apart from that, if you are curious to know, so what is this 3D printing? Then let me tell you, my dear. Under the 3D printing, a computer-aided design is used in order to create some kind of a three-dimensional objects. So once it is created by the computer, then the computer will send the command to, to the printer under which the structure will be constructed in a layering manner. Means of the layer by layer, the structure will be constructed by the command which is given by the computer. So in this way, uh, the structure will be developed by the computers in a time-bound manner. It will be so fast. And yes, my dear, the, the earthquake resilient structures can be constructed. And in this way, the most important thing is about the use of green material. So the 3D structure has been built by using a specially, sorry, specially designed special type of concrete. So the Ahmedabad based Golden Qatar Division of Indian Army has been instrumental in taking forward the project with manifold applications in operation. So I think just for the army, it is going to be a very good project. Apart from that, Dhanu Jatra, which is world biggest open theater, uh, this is going to means it is being held in Odisha, and the area of Odisha is Bargar after two year gap. My dear, it is largest open theater, Dhanu Yatra. And apart from that, means this held between 27th of December 2022 up till 6th of January 2023, in which 130 several artists from 130 cultural troops from across the country are scheduled to perform during the festival. Around 3,000 artists or 130 cultural troops, uh, they will be participating in this festival. However, in this festival, the central attraction is guns. Then we have the last current affair for today's session about the Tokyo. The Tokyo was the Japan's most populous city with approximately 9.7 million inhabitants. Tokyo was Japan's most populous city as of 2020, followed by Yokohama which is the, sorry, which in the same year counted about 3.78 million inhabitants. The families in the Japan will be offered up to 1 million yen per child to move out of Tokyo in an effort to reduce the overcrowding in capital. Just imagine if such a kind of a program is implemented for us, then Indians will be damn rich. So this is everything from my side. My dear, just a humble request from you guys. If you like the session, kindly press or hit the like button. If you are a new 
listener you are coming for the first time over the channel of vidya guru don't forget to subscribe it and also press the bell icon because you forget at the end of the session my dear there and uh, all your suggestions are welcomed here and for anything means on the factual basis if anything is apna apna jiska anything on the factual basis if is apna uh, delivered wrong from my side then i'm so sorry for it my guys might be uh, i'm wrong on some factual details but yes uh, i try my best to to apna uh, deliver you the best news and the best important current affairs for your examination so if you want to give me any suggestion your such your suggestions are welcome kindly write your suggestions in the comment box we'll read them all and we'll try to incorporate them in my next session